Salesforce is a publicly traded company. Please make any purchasing or architecture decisions based on our generally available features and information, and not on any forward-looking statements that may be made during this presentation. This video brought to you by AppExchange Technical Enablement. Welcome to Declarative Package Configuration, the fourth video in the 2GP Deep Dive Features and Use Cases series. These videos provide an in-depth look at the features and use cases for second generation packaging. Now the second feature we'll be covering is a big part of 2GP's source-driven package development model, and that's declarative package configuration. See, every Salesforce DX project starts with a project configuration file. This file is always named SFDX Project JSON, and it always contains a key named package directories. This key holds an array of JSON objects that define each package within your project. So for example, if you were building multiple packages in a single namespace, the source for each package would be in a different folder, and each folder would get a corresponding entry here in the package directories array. Now each entry also has critical information about the package that it represents. There's the path of the folder containing the source for the package. There's the name of the package, which is what subscribers would see during installation and in the installed packages section in setup. And there's also the version name, which is a consumer friendly label for a given family of releases. And finally, there's the version number. This will be used the next time that the package is built. And there's something interesting about a 2GP version number versus its 1GP counterpart. You can see that there's the same major, minor, and patch version numbers that 1GP has, but 2GP adds a fourth portion to represent the build. And when you specify the build, you can either use a number or one of two build keywords. In our sample config, the keyword next is being used. And this tells the 2GP build system to automatically increment the build number the next time a package version is created. And this is great because it saves the developer from having to make a lot of tedious changes all the time. Now, that brings us to package dependencies. Remember, with 2GP, if something isn't in source, then it's not in the package. And this project configuration file is part of how that works. So if you picture the 2GP build process that I showed in the previous video, where we talked about 100% source-driven package development as a feature of 2GP, you might remember that in my explanation, there was a little bit of magical hand-waving in this step where we went from the CLI to the end product of individual package versions. What's actually going on is that the CLI is sending the source of your package into the 2GP build system where a special kind of scratch org called a build org is created in the background. Now, I wanna be clear about this build org. You don't get to see it, you don't get to touch it. If I wasn't telling you about it right now, you might never even know it was there. The thing is, this build org is used to validate the contents of your package. And that means if your package depends on other packages, then those packages need to be installed in the build org before the metadata from your package is. So assuming everything goes well and your package is valid, then that's when a new package version is created. And now that you understand the 2GP build system, this dependencies declaration is gonna make a lot more sense. Let's start by looking at how a couple of internal dependencies here are being declared. Now you can see the syntax being used is human readable. It combines descriptive names like common schema and accounting logic with version numbers instead of cryptic package IDs. And that's made possible by entries in the package aliases section. Here you can see that common schema and accounting logic are both aliases to a package two ID or a zero HO for short. Now a zero HO ID represents the concept of a specific package that's owned by your developer hub. That means that when you're declaring dependencies, you can make use of the keyword latest. 
This lets the 2GP build system know that you want the latest build of a particular major.minor.patch version number. So, what about dependencies that are not owned by your dev hub? Well, in that case, an alias to an external dependency is used. Here, the alias for Apex library at 1.3.0.1 is pointing to a 04T package version ID. And this makes sense for a dependency that's not owned by your dev hub, because the only thing that you could possibly know about someone else's package would be its public 04T ID. Now, regardless of whether your dependencies are internal or external, the order in which they appear is meaningful. And that's because dependencies are installed in the build org in the same order in which they're declared in your project config. So if you think about it, and if the package accounting logic actually has dependencies on that Apex library, Apex library would have to be the first dependent package being installed or, or um, so that the accounting logic package would have the metadata that it needs. And all of this is done so that when the expense calculator package is actually uh, validated, that it's got everything it needs in place. So this dependencies uh, um, schema is very important and it's, a, and it's a key part of this declarative package configuration. So why is the way 2GP does this better than how 1GP does? Well, let's take a look at that from that perspective of the developers, product owners, and DevOps once again. So from the developer's perspective, full visibility into all package dependencies is a really big deal because developers otherwise might not even know what dependencies exist in a 1GP project. That's because with 2GP, the dependency hierarchy is clear and easy to understand. They don't have to go to a, a, a packaging org to look up what all the dependencies are. It's right there in SFDX project JSON declarative. And then finally, this ability to use keywords like latest and next, these let you build internal packages with less overhead because you're not keeping track of package version IDs. Now, from a product owner's perspective, once again, no more surprise dependencies. It's a huge boon to, to product owners because it leads to a lot more safety and, and, and teams that, that feel safer to explore building extensions for packages that require changes to an org shape. And that's because there's a clear history of package dependency changes and even org shape uh, changes within the source that's tracked by your VCS. Finally, for DevOps, you know, being able to have a complete certainty of what's in each package build is a big deal um, because literally it is impossible to have a package dependency that's not explicitly declared. DevOps can even use their tools, uh, you know, for their, their VCS systems like GitHub or, or, or any other, you know, compatible system. They can apply rules on, on check-ins so that if you check in SFDX project JSON, it can force a product owner to review what changes were made just to help ensure that there's an extra layer of governance, um, you know, whenever new package dependencies are added. And all of this provides the blueprint for package installation steps when creating new scratch orgs. To learn more about the features and use cases of second generation packaging, check out all of the titles in this video series. You can also use the 2GP Deep Dive Trail Mix to find additional resources about second generation packaging. Finally, registered Salesforce partners can join the Managed Packages group in the partner community. It's the best place to ask questions and get up to date information about first and second generation managed packages. Don't forget to smash the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of the great content by Salesforce developers.